So this video is being recorded upon request of a user who wanted to be able to trigger events in their smart home based on the alarms on their phone. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to use Tasker, Sharp Tools, and Auto Alarm to trigger actions in their smart home. So what we'll do is we will set up uh, a couple of different profiles. We're going to set up one profile which gets the time of the next alarm and then we'll set up another profile which triggers based on the time of that next alarm. So in the first profile, in the bottom right, we'll click the plus icon, we'll create a new time-based profile, and we'll uncheck the from value and until value, and we'll instead check the every button and say that we want this to run every 30 minutes. So we'll press back to save this, and it will prompt us to create a new task, which we'll do. And you can optionally give this task a name, but I'm just going to skip it. And in this action, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is run a plugin, the auto alarm plugin, which gets the time of the next alarm. And if I hit the pencil icon for this, we'll see a variety of different variables which are going to be set. And the one that we're particularly interested in here is seconds, plural, which is the uh, seconds to the next alarm. So we'll hit back. And since we don't want to just trigger when the next alarm occurs, we want to actually trigger a few minutes before it, we're going to create a variable to hold our offset. So we will create a new variable. And we'll see we find variable set. And in this, what we're doing is we're setting the variable defined in name to the value that we specify. So if we set the value in name to minutes underscore before, and we'll set the value to five minutes. So we're saying we want to trigger the alarm five minutes before the alarm goes off. And we'll click back to save that. And now we need to calculate the time of the alarm. So in the first step, we get the seconds, how many seconds are remaining until the next alarm triggers. But we want to actually calculate the time of the next alarm and then subtract off our offset minutes before. So we'll do another variable set. And this time we're going to create this as a global variable. So global variables in Tasker are variables which have capital letters in their name. So in this case, we're going to call it before alarm. And we're going to do a calculation. And since we're doing a calculation, we're going to check the box for do maths. And what we'll do is we'll first tap the tag icon to get a variable. And we'll scroll down until we find time in seconds which should give us a variable capital T-I-M-E-S, or times. And with that, we're going to add in our offset in seconds. So we can hit the uh, tag button again, and we will find uh, our time in seconds. I'm sorry, I mean the, the, the offset until the next alarm. So what we have here is basically we're taking the current time in seconds and adding how many seconds into the future the next alarm is. So basically at this point we've calculated when the next alarm is, but we also want to offset uh, our time before. So we want to do this a few minutes before the alarm goes off. So let's subtract a value. And in this case, we're going to subtract our minutes before variable, which we set a few seconds ago. So since we set the minutes before variable in minutes and everything else is in seconds, we need to multiply the minutes by 60 seconds to turn it into seconds. So if this value was set to uh, five minutes like we did, we're actually going to set it to 300 seconds, basically. So at this point, we've calculated the current time plus how much time into the future the next alarm is and subtracted out our offset, the five minutes before, which is when we want the alarm to trigger. So we can press back, and we should have all three of the actions which we need in this task. We'll back out of it. And this task, again, is running every 30 minutes to set that uh, before alarm variable. So we'll now need to do something with that variable. We'll create a new task. And again, we'll do a time-based task. This time, we'll use the from and to values. But we'll tap the little arrows icon to the left of each one, which lets us put in a variable. And that variable is going to be our before alarm value. We'll do the same thing for the to. And make sure when you're doing this that you double check your, your variables that you type in. 
and that you type in a valid value. Uh, and I actually just noticed it's kind of hidden uh, here, but there's a little tag icon that you might be able to tap as well. So we will back out of that. And at this point, you if you already had a task in place which was controlling your smart home and doing the things you wanted, you would just select it from this uh, set of tasks here. But in our case, I'm just gonna create a new one, which I'll call smart home uh, example. And within this, we can do whatever action we want. So for example, let's say every time an alarm on my phone triggers, I wanna open the plugin sharp tools and control a thing. So we'll hit the pencil to edit that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to filter to the device I want. So I'm gonna grab a dimmer switch, uh, which is maybe my bedside lamp, and I'm gonna turn my bedside lamp on. And I'll hit apply here. And press back so we can see that. And press back one more time. So I'll expand out the first one just to review what we're doing here. Every 30 minutes, uh, we're going to trigger auto alarm, which will set some local variables. We will then set our offset to five minutes, and then we'll actually calculate the time that we want our other profile to trigger. And we'll save that value into the global variable before alarm. Then in the second profile, we're gonna use that before alarm variable. And what that's doing is saying, at that particular point in time, I want to trigger some action. And on our case, that's the smart home example profile, which will turn our lamp on. I know that's a lot of information and I know I went through it kind of fast, but that's what the, the pause and rewind buttons are there for. So go ahead and uh, get to it. Thanks.